Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Flight Sim Hub and welcome to the second installment of our Your Controls tutorials. In this video, we're going to cover off some tips and tricks for taking to the skies with a co-pilot on the VATSIM network. If you haven't already, please be sure to give our first video a watch, which details how to install your controls and how to get set up for your first flight. The VATSIM network adds a huge amount of realism to your flying experience and having another crew member with you not only adds to the immersion, but it can reduce some of the stress and workload during your flight. Remember, if you took a flight in real life, the chances are there'll be two pilots occupying the cockpit. We're going to cover off how V-Pilots should be configured when utilising your controls and how to ensure your flight is as smooth as it can be. Before we begin, it's worth mentioning that this video relates to only your controls usage on VATSIM and it's not a tutorial on how to fly on the VATSIM network. As I'm sure many of you are aware, VATSIM can be very overwhelming for beginners, so if it's your first time, please make sure to view the VATSIM website and other video tutorials. In our case, I had some prior VATSO experience from several years ago, but my co-pilot had never flown on the network, so we actually used your controls to share some responsibility on our first flight, and we found that it worked well for the most part. During our taxi on our first flight back, however, we did not have our airport charts available, and this caused a small delay when taxiing. Luckily, we had an excellent and welcoming controller, and the airspace was relatively quiet. The point here is this tutorial is for integrating your controls with the VATSIM network. It's not a one-stop shop for taking to disguise on VATSIM. Him. So if you're not confident with it yet, please do some reading and view some other tutorials on how to fly on the VATSIM network. With that in mind, let's move into the simulator itself. Now, as per the advice in the last video, you need to make sure that all of your flight simulator options are the same between both simulators. You also need to make sure that you've obviously got the same aircraft selected. There's the same weight and balance between both aircraft, and we would recommend setting the date and time to live and switching off any AI traffic, as the pilot will inject that traffic for you in the simulator. Perhaps the most important thing when flying on VATSIM with your controls though is the navigation data. Again, we recommend using SimBrief to generate these flight plans so you can submit them to VATSIM, but also you need to ensure that the simulators have got the same air rack database. We utilize Navigraph, which can update the simulator's air rack database to the latest one, which is perfect for flying on the VATSIM network. If you don't have the same navigation database, this is going to cause problems with the flight management computer and navigation data. As you can imagine, if you're on VATSIM and this happens, that could be a serious issue. For example, if you get a direct two-way point and only one person has it, that's going to cause big issues and may, may cause you to actually disconnect from the network. The easiest way to verify this is to simply fly offline with the co-pilot to begin with before heading on to the VATSIM network. This will allow you to actually confirm that you both have the same AIRAC database and you're both able to control the aircraft fine before you take it on VATSIM. Please also make sure you don't leave the default starting point as the runway. As you'll know on the VATSIM network, if you do that and then connect to VPILOT, you're probably going to be in some trouble. You need to select the gate. Both of you can zoom in on the map and choose where you want to so you just click on the gate and then click set departure. It won't wipe any of your flight plan out. Make sure you've both got the same gate before you start your controls. So before we hit fly in the flight simulator, we're going to fire up your controls and select our aircraft type and then save those settings and then hit start server. Once we're at this point, we can then share the session code with our co-pilot and then we can hit fly in the simulator. Now it's a good idea to verify that you're both in the same cockpit by manipulating one of the settings in the aircraft you will of course be in a cold dark state when you set the gate as your departure so feel free to flick on external power but don't do anything else at this stage what you will need to do is open up the vpilot client and fill in the details selected on the screen so your call sign and aircraft type what we need to figure out is if anyone is actually at our gate. Now you can typically check this by looking at a map on VATSIM, but accidents can happen as shown in this video. Whilst recording this, I actually ended up at the same gate as somebody else. If this happens, you need to just exit the flight and then restart at a different gate. Once you're at a gate then, with nobody else there from the VATSIM network, your observer can then also connect to vpilot. Now, the observer must connect with the same call sign, but a letter after the call sign. So you can't have a number. If there's a number, then vpilot won't recognize it as an observer and two aircraft will show in the simulator. So you must use a letter. In this case, I just put A afterwards as per the your controls guidance. 
And you can also see the box to connect as an observer must also be ticked because if you don't tick this, the same thing will happen and two aircraft will be in the simulator. Now, as for filing a flight plan in vPilot, Technically, only the primary user needs to do this. The observer technically doesn't need to enter in the flight plan, but there's nothing stopping them from doing it as well for good measure. What we do recommend is you put in the notes that you are in a shared cockpit setup. That will tell air traffic control what to expect, that there may be two people calling from the same call sign. Because both of you are connected with vPilot, the both of you will be able to call air traffic control and also monitor all radio traffic. What you may find is that if you are on a call with this user via something like Discord or Skype or Teams, you may hear that there is a slight echo when one of you is making a call to air traffic control. The actual frequency that vPilot uses is taken directly from the aircraft in the simulator. So as your controls is syncing that data and those key presses, you should also both always be on the same frequency so that way you should both be hearing the exact same radio communications. The same should go for text based chat as well which obviously you'll use more on Unicom. To be honest we have seen some issues with this but this likely lies with the vPilot client and not actually your controls itself. The only issues we've seen is the observer sometimes can't see every message that gets sent in and we're not too sure why this is but it's never been a major issue for us. So just bear in mind that on VATSIM, you're still gonna be subject to some of the quirks of your controls. For example, giving control to one another at certain points in the flight. So whilst in real life, you might have a pilot flying and a pilot monitoring for the majority or for the full flight, obviously on VATSIM, you might wanna mix things up a little bit. We're gonna roll a clip now of a flight we did into an airport we hadn't been to before on one of our first flights back on VATSIM. And you can see a little bit of how we shared the actual work. Delta, Bye -bye. Ground on Delta, contact ground, decimal six, Over to ground on one two one decimal six. Thank you. Right, you might have to take control here while I. Yeah, guide you. I'll take control, but yeah, it's a take. So as you can see, what you noticed here was my captain for the flight actually did the landing of the aircraft, but he actually had the airport charts available to copy taxi instructions. So at that stage, he passed control back over to me for the your controls client, and I actually open your controls on my secondary monitor to ensure I have control back of the aircraft, ready to taxi it to the gate or stand. Control, okay, one, two, one. Can you set one, two, one, decimal six? One, two, one decimal six. At this stage, I actually asked the technical captain of the flight to set the frequency. And the reason why is he's got a radio panel as part of his simulator setup, whereas I don't. So it's a bit more of a pain for me to do it. This is an example of a cockpit resource management, but a slightly different one to what they probably teach you to fly a real aircraft. In this case, we're, uh, we're simply doing what's most convenient for us. And it shows how some of the workload can be taken off in a that simple. Did you get that landing on record? Yeah, the whole thing. Still on record now. <laughs> Once it's in, tell me I'll call. Are we ready to taxi? It could yeah. take the next to your left and then... Yeah, are you going to write it down on me? Can you? Uh, I'll try to write, write it down, yeah. I'll just tell you to. In ground, good evening, because we're accelerating Victor. Speed brakes coming out and flaps in now. Can you call, actually, or not? Say Austrian uh, uh, Victor, squad 1000. I don't want to step on anyone. I'll tell you, I'll let you know when you're clear. This conversation was actually a result of my device having some issues with audio, which led me to actually step on some people whilst they were transmitting it during this flight. It became apparent, so I wanted to double check that I wasn't going to step on anyone calling ground or ground calling another aircraft. Okay, clear now. Austrian 804, ground, we're ready for taxi, we just vacated runway uh, 34 on the left. It also goes without saying that when you are in a dual cockpit setup, if your sole purpose at that stage of the flight is to listen for a radio communication, the chances are you're going to hear it a lot better if you're not inundated with tasks to do on board the aircraft itself. The other advantage is, for example, at this stage, both of us were able to hear the transmission, so if one of us was to read back incorrectly or miss the transmission, the other person was likely to have heard it. Austrian 804, welcome to Wien. Taxi Delta, hold short Delta 3. Okay, Taxi Delta and hold short Delta 3, Austrian 804. 
So as mentioned earlier, if you haven't already, please be sure to go and give our first video on your controls a watch as there's a lot more detail in how your controls actually works and how the setup of it works. As we said, this video is just focusing on the few steps you've got to do to get set up on the VATSIM network. Please do let us know if you do take your controls onto VATSIM with a friend and we thank you all for the tremendous support we've received on the first video and on our YouTube short series. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video in this three-part series where we cover off some quirks of payware aircraft with the Your Control software.